At this point, I'd like to introduce Brian Nosek, uh, the Executive Director of the Center for Open Science. Brian has led COS since our founding in 2013. Brian is my boss, and I'm pleased to welcome him. Hey there, Brian. Hi, Terry. Uh, thank you, everybody, uh, for attending uh, this event. We're delighted uh, to provide an update, progress report, perspective on trying to advance the mission to increase openness, integrity, and reproducibility of research. And my job uh, today uh, is to uh, provide some broader context of what the value of open research is uh, for the types of solutions uh, and activities that the researchers and uh, service providers that you'll hear from later uh, are working on. And there is no single one answer uh, for what the value of an open research process is. In fact, when you look at the open scholarship community, there are a variety of different motivations underlying many of the initiatives, activities, advocacy for what makes open research an attractive uh, in uh, helping the research community do better. One class of interests is open research advances who gets to be involved in the research process, democratizing access to the knowledge base itself, providing inclusive pathways for who it is can get involved in the research process and discussion with their own skills and interests and attributes, and questioning how resources get allocated uh, for research producers to do uh, their work, uh, rather than all being centralized to uh, the rich getting richer uh, in uh, being able to do research. A second area of motivation is really understanding what is being done. A big challenge of the research process in its st standard state is that you kind of just have to trust what it is you read in a paper. And the transparency of the entire process and content behind that paper, the research data, the re analytic code, uh, the protocols, helps to provide context for the consumer of that research to understand what was done, to recognize the implications, to question it, to scrutinize its reliability in order to help with that self-corrective process in science. And likewise, just sharing allows for reuse. We generate so much interesting data and methods and measures that facilitating the exchange of that information can allow for better aggregation of evidence, better uh, testing of new ways or alternative methods uh, that are similar enough, uh, but different enough to sort of expand the way we think about the questions that we study. And then the third class of activities for motivations is a focus on improvement. How is it that transparency can help with accountability so that it really matters that we do the best we can, that we operate with high integrity? How can that transparency help support uh, obtaining evidence of reproducibility or replicability of findings, promote rigor? It doesn't establish rigor itself, but by being open, you get to see uh, the extent of rigor. There's an opportunity for feedback loops uh, to improve that rigor. And I know that others might look at how I did it. And so uh, the motivation uh, to do rigorous research might be increased. And all of that combines into a process that has greater self-corrective uh, potential. Now, the impact of that, the why of all of that, has many different uh, ways that we might think about how it is open research helps to advance discovery of knowledge, treatments, solutions for the world. I wanna zoom in on one particular area where open research really has an impact on how it is that science is understood and recognized and valued in the public sphere. A real challenge uh, in any uh, knowledge claim area is what is the basis of trustworthiness? Why should researchers be trusted in terms of their findings and reports compared to other types of knowledge claims that get spread uh, on the internet and otherwise? And one way that people have thought about how to think about researchers being trusted is that they should be confident in their findings, they should communicate them with certainty, and they should, they should just be correct. This is what makes researchers trusted, is if they're right all the time, and if they convey that certainty and confidence. And I think that's the wrong way to think about it. That instead, researchers gain trust by being more humble about their work, being calibrated between the evidence and the claims that they make, 
and demonstrating a constant effort for truth seeking of just trying to figure it out. And I want to illustrate this in a singular domain, that of uh, replication research, and then broaden out the implications to this overall sense of how we promote trustworthiness through openness. So the data I want to talk about comes from a survey uh, that I did with uh, Jordan Axton, uh, Charlie Ebersole, where we surveyed U.S. adults on a variety of scenarios about here's a behavior that a researcher did. Tell us how much you think they have ability to do research, how ethical do you think they are in their research, and how true do you think their findings are? So the basic idea is this. What you see in the middle, this dark line, is the response on average for the respondents when they were given a very simple scenario. Researcher X found an interesting result and published it. How much do you think they are a good scientist, they have ability? How much do you think they're an ethical scientist? How much do you think that their finding is true? With that all being all the information that you have. And then what we did was we said, okay, given that, now we give you a little bit more information. Now give us your ratings of ability, of ethics, and truth. So I'll walk through a few of the examples of additional information that we provided the respondents. So for example, the researcher X found an interesting result and published it, starts here. And then you learn additionally, researcher Y, somebody else, succeeded in replicating your finding. And what you observe is that from that baseline of all you know is that they found the result and published it, that the rating of researcher X's ability and ethics goes up, increases, and the perceived truth value of the finding, right? This makes perfect sense, right? Somebody else independently replicated the finding. Oh, their, the original researcher must be pretty good. They must be pretty ethical. And their finding's probably true. And then you see a similar thing in reverse. Researcher Y fails to replicate researcher X's finding. Now, survey respondents perceive uh, that researcher to be slightly less, the original researcher, slightly less ethical, maybe not as good uh, at their research. And the finding that they had originally is maybe not true. Okay, compare those two simple scenarios with ones that get a bit more complex. So researcher Y failed to replicate that finding. And then researcher X comes back and says, oh, their methodology was terrible. Their result is not valid. You should ignore uh, what it is they did. In that case, respondents similarly uh, just think that probably less likely to be true. Uh, the truth value goes down. And the perceptions of that researcher X's ability and ethics go down even further. Now the scenario changes a little bit. Researcher Y fails to replicate that finding. Researcher X says, hmm, I agree with their methodology and their conclusion. Maybe my original result was wrong. The respondents perceive the truth value to go way down in that case. They both agreed that original finding wasn't correct. But the perceptions of that original researcher X's ability and ethics improve compared to baseline. So even though researcher X's finding has been uh, failed to replicate and they agree, maybe I was wrong, the perception of their ability actually goes up and their ethics goes way up. Here's another variation. Researcher Y fails to replicate the finding. Researcher X says, that's interesting. Now I wanna study this to figure out why they got their result and I got my result. And so I start a new project to figure it out. In this scenario, the perception of ability and ethics goes way up. There, researcher X is interested, is curious, is going after trying to make sense of this discrepancy between their finding and researcher Y's. But a really surprising thing is that even though the extra information is that the finding failed to replicate, survey respondents think that it's still more likely to be true given researcher X's reaction to it. Wow, they must be really interested. That gives me some confidence in that finding. It's probably still true. Maybe even I'm more confident in it than I was before I knew it failed to replicate, uh, but because of their approach. One more. Researcher X now, researcher Y is no longer in the picture. Researcher X tries to replicate their own work and they publish a failed replication challenging their original result. So I got it one time. Now I try again, I didn't get it. And I publish again saying, well, I didn't get it this time. You see a similar response of decrease in the 
belief that the finding is true as if an independent replicator finds that, but you in similarly see an increase in the perceived ability and ethics. And then finally, the converse, researcher X does a follow-up study, fails to replicate their finding, but says, ah, it's not a valid method. I'm just going to ignore this study and didn't try to publish it. This really is negative consequence, both for the perceived truth of the finding and the perceived ability and ethics of the researcher. So I just want to zoom in briefly on these three, where the perceived truth of a finding separates from the perceived trustworthiness of the researcher. Sometimes the trustworthiness of a researcher tracks the truth value of their claims, right? We want them to be right. These scenarios show that it's not about being right. It's about how the researcher engages with their research, whether they're right or wrong. And this, I think, highlights a really critical theme for how researchers gain in trustworthiness is that they prioritize getting it right over being right. Those scenarios where researchers are all about, I wanna figure it out, whether my original finding is right or wrong, are those where they are most valued in terms of their ability and ethics. And the consequence of that is that the trustworthiness of the research is more about the process of doing the research than about the outcomes. Outcomes are often inconvenient or undesired or inexplicable, but the process is where trustworthiness uh, is engaged. And the real value proposition of open research is to expose that process. It's not just about the outcomes reported in the paper. It's about how we got there and the entire life cycle of planning, executing, conducting, analyzing, all of that being made more available is the means of promoting understanding and trustworthiness of the research itself. And the real challenge in the broader culture where researchers are by and large working very hard to do trustworthy research, they're doing all of that rigorous work behind the scenes of that paper, it is hard work. It is error prone, it is all kinds of false leads, it is a mess, you know, there is lots of stuff that happens in that research process, that is a trustworthy process, researchers doing the best work they can. And a challenge given the current reward system in the research culture is that untrustworthy research, even deliberately untrustworthy research, uses superficial signals of hard work, but skips the steps and still tries to gain credibility in the marketplace of ideas by providing just the simple heuristic signals rather than revealing all of that work behind the scenes because it's the they can't reveal it. The untrusty process didn't do those things. It's the trustworthy researchers that have all of that support that's invisible behind the scenes of the work they did to get to those findings. So let me highlight quickly what, what I mean by this in one example uh, and then hand it off to the rest of the uh, presentation. So consider the publication process itself. In the standard model, what happens is I do all of my research, I submit it to the journal, and the journal conducts a private peer review process that evaluates the research as I had done it and makes a decision on whether it should be published or not. That process, when my paper is published, is opaque. The journal says we did peer review, but it very rarely do you see the entire peer review process. You don't know other than it's published in the journal that they have said, we evaluated this with independent reviewers. Those reviews are based on a glimpse in time. They happen on one occasion, looking retrospectively at the research process and don't ever get updated uh, as more things are learned uh, in that field. It's a dichotomous decision. The credibility anointed by the journal is it gets to appear in our journal or not. And that's the entire signal of how whether this is credible or not. And it's final. Once it's published, it's published. It doesn't change or revise. Now, all of that collapses to a very simple set of heuristics that it's published and what, where it appears as indicators of trustworthiness of a, what is a broad and complicated peer review process. But of course, because it turns into these very simple signals, 
they're prone to be taken advantage of by bad actors. So the existence of predatory journals where you pay to publish and they don't actually have any peer review process at all, they'll just take your money and publish your paper. The existence of paper mills where you can buy authorship and never actually do uh, any of the work. The generation of papers uh, with AI or other tools that don't actually reflect any research that has been done and basic fraudulent behavior of making up data or otherwise are things where the untrustworthy research activity can still provide the signals because you can get the things published, but without any of the work having been done behind it. And so this puts a big disadvantage to the trustworthy researcher because how do you compete with those practices that can generate content so much faster because they're not doing the hard work the way to compete is to be open, is to show your work, to have a model that is transparent. It's not just the paper at the end. It's not just even the peer review process, but the, the reader can see everything. I can show you my original plans, my process, my data, my code, all of those things being available is something that the trustworthy researcher can do and the untrustworthy researcher can't. And that shows the entire life cycle of all of these things occurring, timestamps and everything else. We can also think of a more open model where instead of a dichotomous judgment, it's in the journal or it's not, that there are several types of evaluations of the credibility of research. Trustworthy researchers are doing many different things that add to the trust value of the work that they do. The untrustworthy research has very few and so when there's multiple signals beyond just published or not, it'll be harder and harder for the untrustworthy research to make it through such a process. And then finally, an open model can embrace the fact that everything is tentative, that these things are versioned and evolve over time, not final once a singular process of review occurs. So what researchers really need in this climate to be able to show the trustworthiness of their work is base infrastructure like the OSF or otherwise that makes it possible and easier for them to manage their research workflow and to make that more accessible. They need training because the skills of open research are skills. They're not just, oh, you just post this online. Making your data more usable by others, especially anticipating that at the outset of your work that you know you're going to share it later, requires understanding, managing how to think about fair and care principles uh, for managing that research, making it available. And that takes some time to learn how to do it well. And of course, they need a supportive system of rewards, of incentives, of policies that are aligned with their goals to do the most trustworthy research that they can so that ultimately they can show their work. And by showing their work, researchers have an advantage over others trying to make knowledge claims that didn't put in the same work to do it. So thanks very much uh, for the time. Terry, I turn it back to you uh, to proceed with the program.